Tucker to Moscow with love? Tucker Carlson is in the Russian capital today to interview Russian President Vladimir Putin, much to the chagrin of many in the establishment. A frequent Trump and Russia critic Adam Kinzinger took to X, saying simply that Carlson was a traitor for going to Moscow. Business magnate Bill Browder added, I wish people would stop referring to Tucker Carlson as a journalist. A journalist is someone who is objective. Tucker Carlson has an agenda and brazenly lies to support that agenda. His lies cost Fox News $787 billion. His work in Moscow for Putin will cost the world far more than that, but not but not everyone was so anti-Tucker. Presidential hopeful RFK Jr. posted that the legacy media is in shambles because we've caught on to their lies and propaganda. Tucker Carlson has every right to interview Putin. We need more transparency instead of less. It used to be understood journalists would interview world leaders, even those with whom we were at war. While beleaguered pundit Russell Brand posted a poll on his ex, uh, on, on X asking who the real traitor was, Joe Biden, for continuing to fund the war. Ukraine or Tucker for interviewing Vladimir Putin. Unsurprisingly, Biden seemed to be in the lead at the time of this recording. So this is uh, remarkable. I mean, the number of people screaming traitor, Tucker is a traitor on social media right now is, is, is significant for, we haven't even seen the interview yet, yeah. for going to Russia to interview Vladimir Putin. Something journalists from mainstream uh, outlets from NBC and ABC and MSNBC and Fox and everywhere else have done this periodically. Inter you know, we could go down the list of people who've been interviewed, the uh, Gaddafi's and Hussein's Putin. And, and Putin himself. Putin's been interviewed on uh, NBC and CNN. Yes. It's so it, it's common practice yeah. for journalists to do this very thing. Now, once the interview is available, if people have criticisms of it, if people think it's overly friendly to Putin, um, in the way that some of Tucker's other interviews have been, absolutely fine to criticize it. Yeah. But that's not what they're saying. They're saying it, it, that Tucker is a traitor, that he should not be like allowed back into the country. I saw that sentiment. Because he's doing exactly what journalists do. Now, I think it is fair to point out, as you just alluded to, that Tucker Carlson has done a number of very softball interviews as of late that, frankly, I don't think are to the benefit of his audience, who we were talking about in an earlier segment, how few people have had an opportunity to ask Donald Trump what he actually would do differently than Joe Biden on Israel, for example. Um, and if the failure of he and others in that position to ask those kind of hard questions, I think, is really deserving of criticism. And the if people want to draw an implication or predict that Tucker is unlikely to be especially hard on Putin. I think that is a as a fair prediction, especially since you know I, I, he is not doing this interview in the United States. He's not doing it in the context of a um, uh, of a of a news organization. He has flown to uh, Russia. There have been obviously instances recently of American journalists who have been probing in areas that were not appreciated by the Russian government and are currently in jail. So does that also change the tenor of what this conversation is going to be like? I, I don't know. I think there's, there's a legitimate sure. question about he should ask Vladimir Putin the integrity about of the interview. The Wall Street Journal reporter, right. Evan Gershkowitz, who's exactly. being held um, under uh, absolutely under BS and should be released. It's a blow to journalistic freedom. And I hope he asks about that. I hope uh, he asks about the Ukraine war and how it can be de-escalated and, and brought to an end. Um, but I need to wait for the interview to judge it. And they're saying that the act of doing this is treason. Sure. And I, I wouldn't say the act of doing it is treason, but I do think it's—I it's, don't, I don't think it's as outrageous to say if Tucker Carlson's track record, recent track record is any indication, this is going to be another softball interview. And then to ask the question, what is the purpose of doing it? I mean, people have been resurfacing clips of him. Uh, on Fox saying, you know, why should I support um, Ukraine, which is, I think, a, f a fairer argument than I actually, why shouldn't I support Putin? Because I do. And when you get into that kind of a situation, I don't think it's wrong to say that someone has an agenda. Many people have an agenda. I very much have a political agenda. I'm a progressive. I entered into politics. Zelensky because, has a political agenda. When right. he's interviewed by by journalists over and over again, he has easy. We, we have easy access to him. Right. I would like to hear from Vladimir. But the Putin. critique then isn't you have an agenda. The critique is I disagree very yeah. much with your agenda, and here's why. And here's why I think it's inappropriate to be leveraging your platform to give voice to right. an agenda that I don't disagree with. And that's a substantive argument that people can right. make. But I agree that much of this is just the fact of interviewing someone who I disagree with 
is a problem. And, and frankly, it could be useful, even if it is a softball interview, even if it is coming from the perspective of someone who is more uh, friendly to the Russian government than I am or than a lot of people are. The interview could still have merit. I mean, Putin could reveal something or say something that uh, that makes news. He, you know, he's not someone who talks to Western journalists, very odd journalists of any stretch of the imagination. He lives in an authoritarian country where he can, um, uh, he, where he can keep some control over uh, over the direction of the narrative. I, I think it could. It's absolutely worth doing and crazy to me to see people throw around the T word. I, I've had this debate um, with Nathan Robinson, a founder of Current Affairs magazine, and we've come on different sides of this and different angles over the years about the platforming debate. Yeah. Um, and I, I do agree with him. He feels very strongly that you should t be willing to take people on. He's very famously um, reviewed, actually read and engaged with the books written by any number of very high profile figures on the right and been um, willing to engage them in person to the extent that they're willing to engage him back. Uh, and one thing that he says is if you're going to do it, you have to be prepared, and you have to be prepared to win whatever that means for you, to be informed, to be able to respond to the points that you can very easily anticipate are going to be made. And that if you are not prepared, I think that's the only case in which you might not want to do it, especially if you could be used as a, a useful idiot. I'm sorry for a much broader political agenda that could be d destructive on a much bigger basis of than uh is Jordan Peterson cool or not? Um, and so I do. I don't. I don't. I don't think it would be irresponsible for Tucker Carlson to go into it and and not be prepared to get out of it what he wants to get out of it and what would be journalistically useful to get out of it, as opposed to taking advantage of a obviously interesting interview subject. Mm -hmm and get exploited in ways that he might not be able to anticipate. So that's the only thing I would also say is that I hope he is going into it clear-eyed about the fact that everyone has an agenda and that some of those agendas don't align with his own and don't align with the interests of most Americans even potentially, and that he needs to be very prepared and not just be doing this for clickbait and the purposes of selling his own show. Right. And Tucker does, because he, you know, he interviews and releases on X now, he can do he can do hours worth of it, or as much for Vladimir Putin wants to sit down for. It's uh, in some ways better than better than those uh, cable news interviews with world leaders that you just get you get short snippets of their thoughts and then some like vast summary of what they allegedly said that's not actually shown in the in the video because it's it's made for TV. This is made for a social media platform where we could theoretically be hearing from Vladimir Putin for for like three hours as some of his interviews have gone in the past. I think that's very fascinating and we'll likely be watching some of it and reacting, reacting to, to it, it when it is available. More rising right after this.